Well, folks, here we are again for the first forecast of 2016 for Market Journal. And during this last couple of weeks while we've been off with the university shut down, of course, we had a very aggressive precipitation pattern develop across the western United States in response to some El Nino fueled storms moving in to the western United States. And a couple of those storms, of course, made their way into the center part of the country and developed a pretty aggressive storm pattern during the Christmas holiday period, particularly just prior to Christmas and following immediately after Christmas. Now, most of these storms over this next couple of weeks appear to take more of a southern path, something that we would expect during uh, a major El Nino event. And in fact, if we look at El Nino statistics, basically when we look at the impacts from El Nino, the greatest majority of those impacts can be found in the January through March period, particularly if you get into the southern half of California. So we are seeing some significant relief. There's more storms on the way, and some of these will have a bearing not only on the western United States, but on the extreme eastern United States as these systems slip south and then move up the eastern seaboard. And the potential for a significant snowstorm as we move into late next week is becoming, is becoming more of a reality. So let's take a look at the upper air models and see what we can expect as we go through this period. First thing I'll draw your attention to is this is your southern stream storm that moved from California and is now starting to move across the southern plains. And of course in the north, this is our northern stream energy that did generate some precipitation across the northern plains and in combination with some of the energy moving up from the southern plain storm did generate some light precipitation, freezing rain, a little bit of sleet and more in the form of ice and snow as we got up into the Dakotas but as the system starts to move eastward, we're going to see the merger of these two pieces of energy into a single storm system that's going to move up the eastern seaboard. So as we get into tomorrow, you'll notice that all of a sudden all this energy comes together over the Great Lakes. Now we should start to see some fairly aggressive snow, uh, snow patterns across the western Great Lakes, translating toward the east coast as we get into late Sunday and Monday, and this will generate a large substantial area of precipitation over the northeast and also bring down some very significant Arctic air into our region. We may be looking at single digit highs to sub-zero reading highs in northern portions of Minnesota and Wisconsin as this cold air moves in. So as we get into Monday, we start to see a relaxation on the southern extent of this cold air, but it's more directed toward the northeastern United States. So we'd expect some substantial precipitation in the northeast and some high accumulation snows. More importantly, we'll start to watch this ridge start to build into our region as we get into Tuesday and start to bring some warmer air in. So we get one last cold shot of air coming in on Tuesday that will reinforce the snow machine in the Great Lakes region, and then that will start to shift toward our east as we get into Wednesday. And you can see that system coming in for a second storm on Wednesday. This one doesn't look to be as powerful as the one this weekend, but it certainly will bring some messy travel problems. And of course, the warm air starts to work into our region. So as we get into Thursday, we now have a ridge over the center part of the country, a a little bit of nice warming, a little bit of a reprieve, but once again, another storm starting to make, take shape over the southwest that's going to move toward the south and eventually up the eastern seaboard. So as we get into Friday, here comes a system across Texas, and as we go through the day on Friday, it will probably move into south central portions of the mid-Mississippi, lower Mississippi River Valley, and then start to shoot up the eastern seaboard as we get into Friday. So basically in the 8 to 14 day forecast, we're looking for colder temperatures across the southeast, but I think we've vastly underplayed the amount of cold that will be coming in to the northeast and north central parts of the United States. And this below normal precipitation trend from next Thursday to the following Tuesday is likely to be very underplayed, particularly from essentially Illinois eastward up into the northeastern United States. So a very stormy pattern for the west and the east, but in the center part of the country, fairly benign conditions.